key. And the real key is, can you get bright enough to do 10% duty cycle? And, and that, is, that is why we're uh, attempting to get there. And that's, that's the goal. So can that you, you can use it for that. Can you imagine maybe Sorry? having, maybe there could be multiple modes for the same device. So yeah, it could be maybe a standard mode with maybe 50% duty cycle and then the performance mode for gamers that goes to a 10% duty cycle. Is that something that can be envisaged? Absolutely, that's, that's a smart idea uh, because the 100% uh, is uh, certainly good enough for most things and everything doesn't have to be so fast. So I think multiple modes on a headset are a very wise thing to do. Now, it's, uh, you bring up a good question. Now I want to go through that list of headsets that I looked at and uh, see if there's any with that kind of mode. So the other thing, though, they think about is that same question on AR. And when I think about AR, and here I'm going to, I'm going to separate. Uh, I forget what you called it in your uh, report, but a camera-enabled AR that's used by many. Then you're very good in terms of uh, the VR. It's going to be the same thing. You don't need to fight the outside light. The other great thing about a camera-enabled AR is if I'm a digital image to you, like I am right now, and somebody shines and it, you see the outside world, and in the outside world, I have a bright light behind my digital image, you're gonna see it right through my head. Whereas if you, have a, if you see the outside world, but if you have a camera enabled, you can avoid that issue. So camera enabled would be more like if I wanted to play Pokemon Go with a, uh, a headset, and I wanted to be AR, a camera enabled would be better. Of course, the issue that you have to remember is that camera better be fast or I'm going to be bumping into trees. On the other hand, personally, I can't see putting an AR headset and running around outside or in my office playing a game. I can't see that. And the other one though, if you go to a regular AR device where you can, where you see the outside world literally, then I, I find it, it's hard to imagine uh, doing a very immersive thing like a game because of that, the light's gonna show through me, it's not gonna look realistic. Whereas if I'm doing something like uh, you could read about on the internet, I'm designing a car and I mentioned this on one of the charts, you and I are in a different place, you're in the UK, I'm in the East Coast of the US and we're designing the same car. We can see the car before us, you can manipulate it, I can manipulate it. Or if we're doing a, uh, if we're doing anything like that with uh, a real device, designing an airplane, it doesn't matter. So then, AR is okay because I want to see somebody else come in my office, but it, I'm not fighting. I can set up the inside view so that there aren't big lights behind the car, things like that in the real world. So then I, I find it hard to believe that somebody's going to need a 10% duty cycle. And they're going to use that on an immersive AR where it's see-through. I, I haven't heard that use case yet. Yes, I think that's a very challenging uh, use case. Um, but I, I think you're right. That for most people, even the, we call it video pass-through in our report. Yes, so, that's so right. Using a video feed, and that is definitely more suitable for any kind of entertainment and consumer consumer application where you don't have to move too much.